Hi everyone, it's Sam from SiteMate. Dayworks Sheets, sometimes called Dayworks Dockets, are used by the client and contractor as a signed record detailing the quantity of works completed for that day or that shift uh, and kept as evidence of completed work for payment claims so that if disagreements arise later down the track, uh, they can easily be settled with, uh, with signed records from both parties. Uh, so in this video, we're gonna look at how we can set up a Dayworks sheet um, inside of Dash Pivot um, to allow us to sort of streamline our sign-off process to save time and keep track of all of our dockets uh, in, instead of uh, the traditional way of sort of chasing down paperwork and emails and phone calls and, and all of that stuff. Um, so it's really easy to set up inside of Dash Pivot. We've already got our Daywork sheet template set up and, and it's been set up as a workflow. Uh, so what that means is that we've got three columns here. We've got contractor, client review and closed. And the idea here is that if we were to add a new day work sheet, uh, it would first populate inside of this first column. And then as it gets signed off, uh, it'll move from the first column to the second. And then once it's signed again, it'll move from the second column to the third column using what we call some approval signatures. Uh, so I'm gonna run through an example now and, and show you how it, uh, how it works. If we click on add sheet, uh, it'll open up the form which we've uh, pre-set up as, as part of building our template. We've got a date field up the top, so maybe we pop in uh, the date, and let's just say that we're working on a, on a night shift, let's say, populate the time. Maybe we started at, uh, at six o'clock, and we're working until uh, three in the morning. Weather conditions, let's say it's sunny, the client, you know, we can choose from a drop-down list, um, etc., etc., and we can work our way down the form got a section for a description of the works completed. Uh, we've got some tables for labor and plant and materials. We can add as many line items as we want because these have been set up as tables. Um, and these tables have some preloaded uh, lists in here. So that's kind of helpful when we've got different people uh, or we've got different uh, pieces of plant that we want to populate. And we can go ahead and fill all of this out. And eventually we'll work our way down to the bottom um, and actually something to point out, we've got a, a photos field here. So we can take photos as well of all of the works which is completed for that shift um, and link them in uh, to our form. We can take videos as well. This is really easy to do using the Dash Pivot app. Uh, so we can just open up the app, open up a new uh, day work sheet, click add photos, it'll open up the camera. We can then take a photo. Uh, we can save that photo with some tags and some descriptions. Um, to make it easy to find those photos later on. Uh, but they'll also be linked back to this form. Uh, and so as we make our way down the form, uh, we reach the bottom and we've got a series of sign-offs here. Uh, we've got a sign-off for the supervisor, we've got a sign-off for the client, and then we've got a, another supervisor sign-off uh, once the client has signed. Uh, and you'll notice that for two of these signatures, it's set up as what we call an approval signature. And these are the types of signatures that and they tell us uh, they will move uh, this form to the next column if we sign. Uh, and because our workflow has three columns, uh, we have two approval signatures, which is what you see here. Uh, but notice that the second one is actually disabled. And this is because with the approval signatures, these need to be signed off in sequence. So we can't sign them out of order. They have to be signed in the correct order. So if I don't sign right now and I just save this Dayworks sheet, uh, we'll see that it, it first appears in the very first column of our workflow. Uh, but we need to sign some of those approval signatures in order to progress the form to the next stage. So if we reopen up our form, we scroll down, and let's say that we've filled all of this out and we're happy with that. It's ready to be reviewed by the client. Uh, we can click on the sign button here. And what that will do is it will stamp our signature on here with the time and date, and it will actually lock all of the fields above our signature as well. So um, that's one handy thing about the workflows is that as, uh, as the approval signatures are signed, it actually locks all of the detail above it. So that can't be changed uh, later down the track unless we were to remove the signature by clicking make a change. Um, so that sort of locks off that. And at the same time, it's done a, a couple of things. So in the background, it's actually moved this form to the second column, which means that the next approval signature is now unlocked. Um, so I'll show you what I mean. If I click on save form, you'll see that it's now moved across to 
the second column. And this means that it's now at the stage where it's ready for the client review. So if we were standing out on site and we opened up our tablet or our phone, opened up the Dash Pivot app, and we were standing next to the client and we were asking for uh, sign off, we could uh, on our tablet or on the computer, whatever works, we can click on this add manual signature button. And what that does is it actually prompts for um, their details. So we can pop in uh, Bob Smith, for example, company is just the client, and they would be able to draw their signature on here and sign. And what that will do is it will stamp the signature with the time and date on here. And if we're doing this via the mobile app, it's really handy. Um, you can, instead of drawing with the mouse, you can draw with your finger um, and it, pop, it, it prompts you for all of that same information, name, company, etc. Um, and then it will stamp everything on here. Now, in, an important note on here is that this type of signature, because it's a manual signature, this doesn't actually move our form to the next column. So you can see if I just save it here, it hasn't actually moved our form to the next column uh, because that was not set up as an approval signature. The last approval signature on here is actually the supervisor again, which is this one down here. So we can see that it's set up so that the supervisor can sign and, and close it off. So if we sign now, it will actually move our form to the very last column. So we can see that now it's been closed off and completed. Uh, now, a couple things that I wanna point out about the workflow. Um, the, I guess the most useful one is that we can set up some automatic notifications. Um, so at the top of every column, we have this eyeball icon. And if we click on this icon, we can actually search from all the people who have access to our team. We can opt to select someone to be notified every time a docket moves from this column to this column or this column to this column. So let's say that we have you know, our uh, financial controller or contracts admin, the person who's keeping track of all of the dockets. Uh, we wanna notify that person as soon as the client has signed something off and it's been closed out by the supervisor when it moves to the close column, we wanna notify them. So we can click on this icon here, search through all of the people in here, and maybe we wanna nominate Hudson to receive a notification. You can click on Hudson's name and you see that the icon turns blue, which means that it's active. So what this means now is if I was to create a new sheet and move it through this workflow and, and sign it off and move it to the close column, Hudson would actually receive an email notification saying that, hey, there's a Dayworks docket now sitting inside of Dash Pivot. Click here to view it. Um, he could then open that up, open up the form and get all of the relevant detail. Uh, and it can be downloaded as a PDF. You can send it to someone. Uh, and if a lot of the information in here is sort of the same, especially for Dayworks dockets, maybe a lot of this, you know, it's a lot of the same people, same plant every day. You can actually clone it. And what that will do, I'll show you now, if I click clone, it will uh, copy across all of the detail that we see here, everything that was filled out except for our signatures. So it, it erases our signatures. Um, and if we save it, you can see that our cloned form, you can notice the times here. This one's 1025, this one's 1032. Uh, this is our new clone form and it's moved back to the first column. So that can save us a lot of time as well because we don't have to re-enter a lot of this information. Um, the other thing that I want to point out about this workflow, particularly for Dayworks Sheets, is that this one has been set up where the client signature is a manual signature, what we see here. But I've seen it done many ways and it's completely possible in Dash Pivot to set this up to be uh, a, an approval signature by the client. The only catch here is that the client will need to have a Dash Pivot account so that when they, uh, because the signature will show up the same as this, when they click on sign, it will stamp their account uh, signature with the time and date and their name on here instead of them having to rewrite this every time. So sometimes if you're working on a job that's long enough um, and you've got a good working relationship with the client, you can set them up with a Dash Pivot account um, and, and that way you know, they can sign off everything but they, you can also set them up to receive one of these notifications automatically. So you might get to the end of the shift uh, as the supervisor, you filled out the day work sheet You've signed it off and maybe your client's not on site or they're not available that day. Um, you can sign it off, it'll move it to the next column. It'll notify the client, so whoever you nominate in here, if you've added them into Dash Pivot, their name will show here. They'll get an email notification, they can open it up, review the information, sign it off, and then progress it through to the final column in the workflow. 
Uh, so it can work both ways. It's really dependent on the way that you want to work it uh, on your project, um, but Dash Pivot is flexible enough to accommodate that. Uh, so over time, the last thing I want to point out to you is that if we uh, switch across here, over time you might end up with something that looks like this, where you've got um, several dockets that have been filled out. Uh, with the workflow, it's really easy to see what stage each of these is up to, so it's really clear that these dockets have been fully signed off and closed out. This one in the middle is still up for client review, so we still require a signature or two on, on this one here. And this one's not ready to move across. So maybe we're only halfway through the shift and we're sort of, as we're going, we're filling it out. And we'll get to it when we're ready to move it across to the next column. Uh, but this, uh, this is one way of viewing all of these forms. We can view it as a workflow, but we can also toggle it across to be a register. And what the register view does is it converts each of, each of our forms into a row. And then we have a column for each of our fields. So you can see here that I mean, we've got one for date, we've got one for weather, we've got one for the description of the works, we can see all of our photos here, we can see all the people, their start and finish times. I mean, all of our fields are just displayed here as columns. And what's really handy about this is that then we can start to uh, apply some filters in here. If we're looking for something specific later down the track, we wanna filter by date or we wanna filter by person or weather conditions, that's all available to us here inside of the register view. Um, and in addition to that, if we need to export this information, we've got uh, some selection options over here where we can select each of our forms. And you see that as soon as I make a selection, the, uh, the bar up the top here changes to show us our export options. So we can select either individually or we can just bulk select everything. And our options up here, our options up here are to export to a CSV file so that we can open this up in Excel uh, we can export this whole register as a PDF, um, or we can just download each of these individual forms as a PDF and it will come out with your company branding up the top and information about the project and everything like that. So it's, it's a very formal, uh, formal document, uh, professionally finished and branded, um, which you can then um, store for your own purposes or, or send to someone. Um, so that really summarizes how the Dayworks sheet can work inside of Dash Pivot as a workflow. Um, if you want to get started with a day work sheet inside of Dash Pivot, we do have one available in our free public template library. So if we go to the template section and we click on add new template, we can click choose from free public template library, search for day work sheet, and you'll see that we've got uh, some options here. We can uh, set up the regular sort of day worksheet, or we can set up the workflow, which is what we've run through today, which is what we typically recommend. Um, and you can get started with this template. Keep in mind that every template inside of Dash Pivot can be customized by you. So you can go in and you can modify um, any of the tables, any of the fields, add new stuff, take out other stuff that you don't need, rearrange some things. Uh, you can basically build it to suit whatever you guys need. Um, and if you get stuck on anything, we do have a live chat on the website. You can open this up. You can send us a message if you need to. Um, and you can also search our uh, knowledge base. So all of our help articles and all of our FAQs. If you search for workflow in this example, uh, we've got an article here about forms, registers, and workflows. And pretty much all of these articles all have videos explaining the different aspects of Dash Pivot. So we can see that this, uh, there's a video here, we've got a bit of a, an overview, and then we've got another video about how to set up workflows in here. So if you get stuck, this is usually a good place. Um, but otherwise, you can always click this button here, send us a message, let us know what you're after, and we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as we can. Um, so that really summarizes how you can streamline and track your Dayworks dockets using Dash Pivot. Uh, I hope that this video has been useful, and thanks for watching.